Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. So uh, it's another uh, Tech Tuesday, and today uh, we're going to show you how to use something called a force-sensitive resistor. So um, force-sensitive resistors uh, come in uh, different sizes and different packages. Uh, the one we're using today is basically this uh, square version, and um, it's basically attached into the breadboard uh, with two pins, a resistor and um, some wires and we'll explain the circuit to you in, in a few minutes um, but basically the idea is that um, when you when you press this um, it will give um, basically when you press it, depending on how hard you press it it uh, changes the uh, resistance value um, which can then be detected so what we're doing today is um, we're actually going to uh, use it to detect um, trains now this is an entirely practical uh, train detection system mainly because um, it's not super super accurate um, it's used for detecting kind of uh, ranges of uh, values rather than um, yeah, very precise values so you couldn't really use it to measure the weight of something uh, but you could tell whether something was light or heavier or even heavier still so uh, one application this possibly has is uh, to d detect trains um, right before they approach a, a level crossing um, or perhaps over a barrow crossing or, or some other um, area of your layout where you might want to detect trains but might not have the light level to use something like a photosensitive resistor. So uh, just to demonstrate it, uh, you can see here in the background uh, we actually have uh, the serial monitor going. Now what the serial monitor is is basically um, as I explained last week um, it basically is outputting uh, data to the serial port and so it's coming out the USB cable and going into the computer and basically displaying it here in the serial monitor. So it's a good way for diagnosing things and, and getting some feedback from the system without having to connect a display. So um, what we've done is we've written some code uh, that can basically detect whether something is um, a piece of uh, light rolling stock such as this uh, freight wagon and uh, before I put it on there what we've done is um, you saw me put this uh, plastic um, piece it's actually an SD card uh, carrier um, I put that on there just to sort of uh, centralize the force um, that's being exerted on the actual um, FSR and then I've got the piece of track sitting on top of it and this is very similar to what you'd have um, for like Wayne scales for example if you uh, had a larger container to, to put the object in uh, so it just kind of focuses the pressure uh, down on the FSR so you can see in the background there it's basically saying analog reading is zero, that the track is vacant and so I'm going to take this uh, piece of light uh, freight rolling stock and provided it doesn't uh, roll off on me here uh, you can see now uh, it's changed to what it said, it's got an analog reading and it's got a range of different values here from 13 all the way up to 27 and it tends to increase the longer it's sitting on there right now it's 28, it's gone up to 31 um, so it says uh, freight wagon so you can see that it's um, detected that now if I uh, pushed it off the track it now knows that the track is vacant and this is a slightly heavier uh, class 03 diesel shunter um, if I uh, place that on the track uh, you can now see that it thinks it is a class 03 diesel shunter uh, so it'll take a few seconds for that to um, come up but basically now it's got a reading of about uh, 144 uh, to 156 uh, so it's within that range so we now know it's a uh, it's some form of uh, sm you know slightly larger um, loco but not quite as heavy as uh, something like a diesel or a large steam locomotive so it's enough to know that it's a, a small enough loco so if I take that back off you can see that it's uh, saying track vacant but beforehand it said it was a class 03 shunter. Now what I did was I actually programmed this um, to know which one was which uh, based on the um, value coming back. Now finally I have this uh, class 27 uh, that's quite heavy
Now the class 27 is ranging in value from uh, 288 uh, all the way up to about 333. So you can see there it's uh, able to detect the difference between them. Um, so it's able to identify this as a uh, class 27 just because it's uh, heavier than the uh, the class 3 and it's heavier than the uh, piece of freight ruling stock. Now obviously if you have something that's uh, relatively close together like the, maybe a class 27 and a class 25 the, the, the range is probably not going to be wide enough uh, for you to, be able to ascertain whether uh, it's one or the other but like I said you could use it to detect whether something is um, approaching um, an area of the layout that maybe a photo uh, sensitive uh, device would not work so uh, the purpose of today's video is mainly just to show you um, that this is uh, one possible way for doing train detection. It's probably not the best way, um, but it is one way that uh, works reasonably well. Now the reason I say it's not one of the best ways to do it um, is mainly um, these FSRs are fairly um, fairly um, fragile. So uh, in order to place them on the track like this, you're going to have to put something on top of it. And then, if obviously, if you wanted to ballast over this, uh, it's going to be much harder to detect the pressure. Um, so it might work well, like I said, in areas where you, you would not necessarily have ballast, such as in a freight um, loading dock, or maybe on a, you know a, a depot, or even at a, a level crossing. It might be uh, sufficient to detect a train uh, going through there. Uh, you might be able to put it across. Um, the plastic pieces of the level crossing as well. But I basically wanted to show you um, that there is a way to do train detection uh, using something other than the, the traditional stuff. So if I put this on here, um, if the code is sensitive enough that it can uh, detect that this is a class A3 shunter. So you can tell the difference between um, these three different pieces of rolling stock um, based on our programming. So um, what we're going to do next is basically uh, walk you through the circuit and um, show you some of the code and uh, you'll be able to download it from GitHub. It's going to be a short video um, but it's kind of cool so we thought we'd uh, let you see it. You can see here um, as the thing entered the track, it detected the weight, but it um, didn't quite have a full reading, so it misinterpreted it as the the class of three shunter. So, like we said, it's not highly accurate, um, but it is good enough to detect uh, the presence of something there. All right, so uh, next up, let's uh, show you the circuit and uh, see what's involved. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at the uh, circuit for the FSR. Um, this is a force sensitive resistor. They come in a couple of different shapes and sizes. Uh, they range in price from uh, maybe three or four dollars up to maybe uh, eight or nine dollars. Um, this is one of the more expensive um, kind of square ones. It does cover a large area and basically any of this area at all uh, can be used to detect the weight. Um, I used, like I said, this um, plastic um, micro SD card uh, case. Uh, to basically um, kind of allow me to apply the pressure of the track um, to the uh, sensor pad without actually putting the track directly in contact with the sensor pad. Um, 
the circuit itself is very simple. It involves uh, three pins uh, to the Arduino. Um, so on this side here we have, I believe, the uh, ground uh, for the Arduino. So um, this is the ground pin uh, coming from the uh, supp power supply uh, of the Arduino. We have a, a 10 uh, kilo ohm resistor and then this is going into one of the pins of the FSR and then uh, this uh, green wire here is connected to the other end of the resistor as well as the uh, one of the right hand, basically the right hand wire of the FSR and that's going into analog pin zero on the Arduino and that's actually what we're using in the code uh, to read the data value in and um, then the other pin um, on this uh, ribbon cable for the FSR is plugged into the 5 volt supply so you have the 5 volt supply coming in on one side and then on the other side you have the resistor going to ground and you have the um, analog read pin and so that completes the circuit and it's very very simple um, plugged into the Arduino and then basically um, you push the code to the Arduino and you uh, leave the uh, USB cable plugged in so that you can uh, get the analog read so if I uh, put this here, you can see uh, this is basically the serial monitor, and it's uh, pulling in uh, the value from the code. So like I said, if I um, put this on here, um, put the track on it, and then put, say, something like this uh, Class A3 uh, diesel shunter on it. Uh, provided it's central, you can see there um, what's happening now is it's detected that the uh, class A3 shunter is on there. Um, so like I said, you can use this for uh, maybe a slightly more advanced uh, train detection if you needed to know whether it was a piece of freight or um, an actual uh, loco that was going through. Um, maybe you could use it to trigger uh, something like an MGR or maybe you could use it to trigger um, a train reversal on a shuttle system or something like that. Um, so it does have some possibilities. Um, like I said, it would be a bit tricky uh, if you had to balance the track and so on. So so it may have um, a limited amount of use. But we thought we'd show it to you because uh, it's kind of cool uh, that you could use it to detect uh, the different trains. Um, but you can see here, uh, for example, there's this um, a little bit of uh, offset from the thing. So it thinks now that the uh, there was actually something on the track. So you can see there, just a very little amount of weight on the track um, was causing it to detect something even though it wasn't there. So it's not entirely accurate, uh, like I said, but um, it does have um, you know, some possibilities. So I'd uh, be interested to see um, what kind of ideas people can come up for this. Uh, so if you have any ideas, um, either shoot your own video and put the link in the comments or uh, just uh, put your idea in the comments and we can uh, have a go at it. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is uh, show you guys the code and walk you through the code basically, and then uh, that'll be it for this video. So um, give me a few minutes to uh, get the code ready, and uh, we'll talk you through it. Okay, so here's the code. Um, we'll just let you guys take a quick look at it uh, before we uh, go back and go through it in some detail. Um, but basically here you can see it's uh, reading from the analog pin and doing a series of uh, serial prints based on the results it gets from the sensor. Okay, so the code is very simple. Um, you have two functions, uh, the setup and the loop, and then you also have some uh, global variables at the start. start. You know, a global variable is a variable that's accessible through the whole program. So the very first one is an integer, uh, which means it can basically be a uh, positive or negative number, I think from minus uh, 32767 to plus 32767. Uh, the value here is called FSR pin and it's set to zero. So basically what this means is that it's uh, attached to analog pin uh, zero on the Arduino. And if you note here in the comment, it's expecting to have a 10K uh, pull down resistor, which is basically a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So the next function is the setup function and it does just one thing, which is serial.begin 9600. Now 9600 is the default speed or baud uh, for the serial monitor 
and basically what it's doing is it's just opening the serial monitor. Now the serial monitor was that information you saw at the beginning of the video and um, where it was telling us either the track was vacant or what was on the track. So the final uh, function which is the loop, it does the uh, main piece of the code. So the first thing it does is uh, it does an analog read on the FSR pin. So it's doing an analog read on pin zero and it's just assigning that value to the FSR reading variable. Then the, then the next thing it does is it does a serial print out to the serial monitor saying analog reading equals and then the next line which is serial print FSR reading is basically outputting the value it just stored from the analog read above. Then finally we try to figure out what we have detected. So we do an if statement and that's saying if the FSR reading is less than 10 then it says the track is vacant so it does a serial print line track vacant. Uh, the print line on, or print LN um, unlike the print above uh, basically outputs that um, information and then does a new line or it's the equivalent of pressing the enter key. Um, if the FSR reading is less, is less than 80 then we dissect a freight wagon. If the FSR reading is less than 200 then we detect a class A3 shunter and then if the FSR reading is less than 400 we know it's the class 27 diesel and then obviously if it's something heavier um, or greater than 400 we print out something heavier and then we delay for one second so these values are actually ones I calculated um, by trial and error by simply putting the uh, locos on the track alright so that's it for today's video I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope it gives you guys some ideas. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do with it. That's basically it. So until next time.